Hi, everyone. Today we are going to have the pleasure and honor of speaking to the incredible Emily Penn. She's a female founder of an incredible philanthropic uh, organization called Expedition. And at the beginning of the year, we launched a limited edition Baby Cheeks Color called Mimi, where 100% of the proceeds went to Emily's ex expedition. <laughs> Do you want to know how much we raised with this little baby cheeks Mimi? It's one I of my think. favorite shades too. Do you want to know? It's, it's also one of my favorite shades. We raised and donated uh, $150,000. Oh my gosh. Your organization. We were really looking to, to support someone just like you. We want to hear your story. I want to hear everything. When I just finished university, um, I had graduated with a degree in architecture. So I very much thought that I was going to go and build buildings for the rest of my life. And I wanted to get to this new job as an architect in Australia from England without taking an aeroplane. And so I started to look at ways to cross the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean and came across this boat that was heading that way. It was a boat that ran on biofuel, a project to really prove the feasibility of renewable energy. Um, and off I went and had the most amazing journey across the Pacific. Uh, every morning we had to stop the boat and jump over the side for our morning wash because we didn't have any fresh water on board the boat. Um, and, and I was there about 800 miles from nearest land, from the nearest human being. And I saw a toothbrush floating by uh. and then a cigarette lighter and a bottle top mm. and then these fragments of plastic. And that's when I started to realize how much of a problem plastic was. Started your organization, how many women, it's all women on your team, yeah. right? Yeah. So how many are on your team to, to go out on these voyages and, and how long are they? Yes, yeah, so we have 14 people on the boat at a time, and they come from all over the world and also from all different kind of backgrounds and disciplines. So everyone from scientists to journalists, artists, designers, teachers, industry leaders, policy makers, oh. um, really with this idea that we, we realize that to solve the plastics issue, we need um, many, many solutions. There's not one silver bullet. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need many different people to come to the table to have the conversation um, many and, different and to start types of brains. Yeah, the sort of journey that we take people on, you know, it's all about first going out there and seeing the problem firsthand and really kind of, um, you know, feeling uh, the, the vastness of, of what it is that we're, we're tackling. Um, and, you know, we, we sail for days and days and days just to get to the gyre, which is what we call these accumulation zones. And then in the center of this fast moving current is the calm patch where all the plastic eventually kind of migrates to. What exactly is microplastic and where do we find it? Are typically big bits of plastic that, that could be anything, a lot of packaging um, and all kinds of waste materials that find their way into the ocean because they escape from whatever waste management scheme that we have going on on land, or they come from a country that doesn't really have a waste management system at all. And so they escape into the ocean, but then they start to, to break down. So the wind and the waves and the UV rays from the sun fragment the big bits of plastic into these tiny pieces um, that are the size of your little fingernail or smaller. I've actually got a sample right here of, um, you know, oh this is mostly filled with microplastics. Um, and so it's, it's broken down bigger bits of plastic. But the key here is it's not biodegrading. It's not going back into our, you know, sort of natural nutrients or anything in, in our life cycles. And um, it's just getting smaller smaller to see and then much harder to go out and clean up and um, what typically actually happens is that uh, algae and, and and little barnacles and things come and colonize on this plastic um, and then it, it makes it negatively buoyant so it then sinks in salt oh, water gosh. and that's happening in the deepest parts of our ocean and sinking down you know right to the depths uh, where there's very little scientific research as to what's actually going on down there Oh my gosh. 
I heard the other day that they're finding microplastic in our bloodstream and also in our tissue and in in uh, unborn babies. Is yeah. this is this true? Is terrifying. Um, there's a lot of ongoing research at the moment to understand the full extent. And this is something that kind of caught my attention uh, back in 2014, actually before I had started X Expedition, and partly because we were finding pieces of plastic in fish, um, which is obviously then in the same food chain that we are at the top of. And you know, you can catch a fish on board and you can gut the fish and you can take the stomach that contains the plastic out. Actually, we then started to realize that the tissues themselves had these pollutant chemicals, um, whether that's coming from the plastic or coming from other sources of pollution in the ocean, you know, it is probably a little bit of both. Um, and then us being at the top of the food chain, um, it sort of opened up a whole series of questions for me about, you know, what could be the chemical implication on, on our own health. And mm. at that point, I decided to um, have my blood tested. I set up a project in partnership with the United Nations to choose 35 of these chemicals that are banned because they're toxic to humans. Wow. And we found 29 of them in my blood. Oh, no way. Seriously? Some of them are carcinogens. And others are endocrine disruptors, uh, meaning that they mimic our hormones and they stop important chemical messages moving around our bodies. And um, so these chemicals during pregnancy are really bad news um, because they can, you know, inhibit the, the healthy growth of a fetus inside us. Mm. Um, but also we can then actually pass those chemicals on uh, to our children in the womb when we breastfeed. And, and really that for me was the biggest driver of working with women, wanting to tackle this sort of female-centered issue with a team of women. Um, and hence X Expedition was born uh, to find out more, uh, both in terms of microplastics, but also these other chemical pollutants uh, that we know are in our planet and in our bodies. That 9% of plastic in the world gets recycled, only 9%? And the reason that number is so low really is because plastic is a word that we give to hundreds of different materials. You know, just looking around the rooms that we're in right now, and um, there's, you know, you can probably see right in front of you, maybe 10 different types of plastic that are different um, colors, they're stretchy, they're hard, they're clear, they have different properties. And to give them all of those different properties, they need a different chemical structure. But when you recycle plastic, you can only take one type of plastic at a time um, to turn it into a good quality sort of second life new product. Um, and of course, many um, products, something like a toothbrush has got three or four different types of plastic stuck together that then make it impossible to recycle. Our vital pressed skincare powder is refillable as well as our Lay Nude. So these two are refillable. So we're ultimately going to become completely refillable. I like so much that you offer solutions. We actually built the Shift platform. I love it. It's so great. Shift.how. And it's so cool. All of the suggestions that you have. What do you do, Emily, in your home? I mean, it's really nice getting tips from you because it, it does feel like it's achievable. It's, it is a, a lifestyle switch for many. And then, you know, you can just pick something and you can get started. You know, the bathroom is an area where we typically do accumulate a lot of plastic products yeah. and something like shampoo, you know, there is that sort of challenge. Well, how, how do you package shampoo without plastic? And mm. what I love is when you see brands who almost flip the question on its head and instead of how do you package shampoo, they say, well, how do you wash your hair? without plastic that's ultimately what you're trying to do wow. and that's where you know this sort of invention of a shampoo bar has really come from you know we don't need everyone to do everything but we do need everyone to do something mm -hmm. and so once you've cleaned up your kitchen and you've cleaned up your bathroom and you've got rid of all the plastic from there what more can you do how can you use 
um, you know, your superpower? And is it you know, the place that you work um, or the, the household that you run? Or are you just really good at making little Instagram stories videos? Whatever it is, yeah. use it. Story, there's, you just inevitably feel like you want to help and contribute and participate in some capacity because it's something that affects all of us, obviously. And um, gosh, well, you are incredible, Emily, with your work and unstoppable. So it's it's really such a treat to to talk to you and so eye-opening. Thank you too, uh, you know, for everything that Westman Italia are doing and, you know, really trying to push the bar uh, in the cosmetics industry at, at what can be possible. Um, and we absolutely need to have brands like yours that are really trying to push those boundaries and trying to use new materials that no one else is using and um, you, you know so that we can actually um hopefully then scale um the, these new solutions so thank you for doing that and of course uh, for the donation to x expedition which is going to go a really long way to supporting our community and and the work that we're doing thank you so much emily <laughs> bye